This man needs no introduction. 2016 World Series champion, Travis Wood, joins us here this afternoon. Travis, thanks for sitting down with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, no um, problem. Happy to be here. It's, uh, it's got to be neat for you to come back to Chicago and this city and this team. Absolutely. I mean, the city fans, everybody was so nice. Such a great place to play. It was always my favorite, even when I was on other teams. So just excited to be back. What's uh, when you when you were here? I mean, you played here for, for quite some time. What are some of the things about Chicago that really you when you come back, you look forward to seeing or doing or the food for one? You don't ever have to eat at the same place. <laughs> There's so many restaurants that you can go and it's such good quality food. And then just the interacting with the fans, seeing them, you know, after leaving and coming back. And they're still so grateful, still so awesome. And just getting to see the boys. Did you always pitch high school, Brian High School? You were always a pitcher? You play other positions? or I mean, I played the typical lefty positions. Yeah. You got to pitch, play first base in the outfield. Or outfield. Pretty good yeah. limited. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, so I played all those and just was better at pitching. At, at what age did you really start to focus on your mound work compared to first base and outfield? I think it was 15. I found out I was actually throwing hard. Mm -hmm. And so then the focus just went to that. Did you play other sports in high school? I did. I, well, up to high school, first year of high school, I played football. And then I didn't do basketball. And then after that, my first year, I was going to play basketball, not football. But I went through all these summer programs with all the scouts and everything. And everybody was like, you can't, you can't play. You're, you don't want to get hurt. Yeah. And I never thought about it like that. I was like, no, I'm still playing. But then when everybody's telling you, hey, what if you get hurt? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You start to think maybe if I do this, I'm an idiot. Yeah. So you don't, you didn't, so I didn't play and it worked out for the best. Absolutely. We had a high school coach who really would not, he hated, unless it was golf. Right. If he, he don't want to play nothing else, which I get now. You know? 100%. I mean, you're there to, to win just like any other team. Yeah. So you and I were born two days apart. Perfect. So happy early birthday coming up to you. Well. Um, when you got drafted by Cincinnati out of high school, I mean, you're a kid still. What's that like? It was fun. I didn't, I can't say there's kids in here. I loved school. And <laughs> so, no, but it was fun, you know, because you are a kid and you go out there and get to experience the world early on and in a, a good group aspect. I mean, it was pretty much like college. Mm -hmm. You were with a group of guys that you all stayed close together and that was your family. That was your, your fraternity. And so it was fun. Did they help you? I mean, being with, with your teammates at that level, they helped you transition from a really sheltered, you know, high school kid life to your pro ball. Absolutely. Especially, you know, a lot of the college kids that have been in college and been on their own for a while, they would, you know, kind of take you under their wing and show you the ropes. What was the biggest adjustment, uh, whether it be lifestyle wise, on the field wise, making the jump from high school to pro ball? The worst was the biggest was probably because I got a lot of good friends back home is being in a terrible motel and them calling me and they're at the lake on the skiing and tubing and having fun. And you're like, I'm sitting here in nowhere yeah. grinding. But that was part of it. That's what made made you a baseball player. So you essentially went from throwing against high school players in spring to professional hitters later that year. Yes, but where they had the GCL for the high school people that when they brought you in for the first month, you were pretty much only facing high school guys. Okay. And then they would send you out to wherever. So, I mean, obviously you were you know, coming out of high school, you had a great arm. You were two-time high school state player of the year. Is that right? Yes. So facing upper echelon talent was something you were clearly accustomed to anyways. Absolutely. And I did a lot of um, other like wood bat tournaments with perfect game and things around um, when my baseball season wasn't going on. So throughout the summer and stuff that kept me able to throw to those competitions. When you made it to the major league level and, and through the minor leagues, correct me if I'm wrong, you had four seamer cutter, sinker, slider, change ish in high school. Wasn't that expansive, I'm guessing. I didn't throw a four-seamer until I got to pro ball, so I just grabbed a two-seamer, and I had a, actually had a good curveball in high school, and then I didn't have a change-up, got told I needed a change-up, got a change-up, and lost my curveball. Really? So I, was only, I only had those three. The cutter didn't come on until later in the minor leagues. Okay. And at what point did, you, did they, I mean, when you get to that level, a coach along the way says, okay, it's time to 
experiment with this or pick this up. We need another option right, right, to exactly. rely on. You know, you want as many options as tools and weapons as you got, but you got to be able to perfect them. And he, one pitching coach, I can't even remember his name right now, um, but I was in high A and um, he said, your arm slot would work well for a cutter. Why don't we try that? And so then we just started messing with it and it turned into one of my favorite pitches. And it was just natural. Mm -hmm. Felt good. You came here to Chicago in 2012 season. Um, you were an all-star in 2013, but overall some lean years for the team mm -hmm. year after year mentality wise, that's hard to deal with, right? It is. You got to just go out there and we had a good, luckily we had a good group of guys that would still go out there and lay it on the line. And even if you're having one of those years where you're not winning the games, if you know that your team's out there giving it everything, then you can respect that and it makes it easier. I think you're one of the neat uh, circumstances. You were on the Cubs when they struggled. You were there for the, the turnaround. And as you led, you know, led towards 2015, could you just feel that something was changing or did it take a little while to really sink in like, okay, this is, this is legit. You could feel it. But then again, in spring every year, I'd be like, ooh, we might not be as bad as everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. And then we'd end up probably being that bad. But <laughs> it, at least you felt it had that feeling in spring. And then going into uh, the years 15, especially, had that same feeling in spring, but then you saw it take over into the season. Mm -hmm. And we're winning games and series and stuff. And you're like, this could, this could, we could be on to something. You talk, we talked to Miguel Montero here a little earlier, and he, he said the same thing, essentially, but that maybe you didn't expect to be quite as good as you were in 15 right away anyway. Absolutely. Like, no, we, once we saw where it was going, we're like, oh, we're going to be a pretty solid team this year. And then it just kept going and going, and nobody expected really for us to do. And we were just riding that high that all the way through. We hit a buzzsaw in the CS, but we got them back But the year. corner was turned. Absolutely. From a fan's point of view and watching you guys play, especially you, it always seemed like – you enjoyed being on the field. I mean, you had fun. Absolutely, and, competing. And, and is that something that you kind of always, as a kid even, I mean, it's maybe at that level harder to remind yourself that you sometimes have to take a step back and not let all the outside you gotta energy remember it's still weigh fun. on you? You gotta remember it's still fun. And if it's not, then you gotta figure out how to make it fun. And go out there, and for me, playing was fun. If I'm going to be out there going against somebody, I like the competition. I liked going up against people. It made me better. And you just had a good time with it. Well, you played for a couple managers uh, that I would consider player friendly. Maybe I'm wrong. We were not in the clubhouse with you guys. But uh, Joe Madden here and Dusty Baker in Cincinnati when you were Nailed a him. little earlier in your career. A lot of similarities there in terms of the mm -hmm. way they approach the daily business of being a major league ball player. Absolutely. Um, they're there for the players. They did everything possible to make us have a good time. And that's what it's about. Major differences in the two? Joe was a little bit more um, crazy. He would do, put me in the outfield. Yeah. <laughs> he would move people around. And, and Dusty just liked having fun. He just, you yeah. know, hey, when it's game time, we're about game time. Other than that, let's have a great time. You like to hit, right? I, I mean, love it. You, were you, when you started focusing on pitching, you realize the bat's probably going away. Yeah, it hurt my heart. Yeah, yeah, because in the minor leagues, you don't even hit. You don't hit till double A. And then your um, leagues are so interchanged with American League, National League, that you might get four at-bats a year in double A. And then in triple A, you might get 15. And then you get to the big leagues and you're hit, you got 30. So you got to keep it sharp. Hard adjustment yeah. to make. How many When you were in the pen strictly and not in the rotation, how many – times a day or a week did you remind joe that you're available to hit oh, if, i took bp every day I took yeah. bp every day <laughs> you were an all-star in 2013 as a starter and towards the, the later part of your career with the cubs you worked out of the pen in 16 mm -hmm. and had a phenomenal year those are like night and day right in terms of of roles it's a big difference a uh, big difference one of them you hope to throw 200 innings and the other one you might only throw 60 innings, mm -hmm. but you might be in 60 games. It's just a different toll that it takes on your body, and you just have to figure out how to make that adjustment to where it fits for you. How did you do that? Because you had been a starter most of your life, right? Uh, until, it was 2016 the first year you did not make a start in the big leagues? Yes. Totally different role. Who helped you kind of transition into, into that? Because you, you, so, you, you were so good out of the pen. I had some friends down there that just kind of, you know, talked to me about, you know, when to play catch and how to get loose. 
But other than that, I was excited about going to the pen because, like I said earlier, I like being in the game. And now I've got an opportunity to get in way more games. Mm -hmm. Took the bat away from me, which I wasn't happy about. <laughs> but being able to get in those games, I was like, now I can help instead of 30 games, I can help in 70. Yeah, pitch sequence, repertoire, arsenal change at all in, a, in that setting coming out of the pen in, in a given situation? or The pitch sequence and repertoire, no, but the mindset did. It was, I don't have to last for five to seven innings. Go out there and you might have one inning, one hitter, give it everything you got, blow it out. Mm -hmm. When you were in spring training in 2018 with Detroit, you, you hurt your knee pretty bad. Um, Blew out my knee. What, take us through that. So... It was funny because in the off season or two weeks prior, I had a hunting accident where the crossbow misfired and pretty much cut this whole finger off right here. So going into spring, I had two pins in my, in my fingers, so I couldn't even practice. I had somebody catch the ball and I would just throw bullpens and just, they would throw it back and catch it just to stay sharp. Yeah. And finally I get the pins out and I'm in there like, all right, they're out. I can, let's, I need to pitch. I'm over not being able to do nothing. And they're like, no. And I'm like, I'm fine. I said, they made me play catch. And they're like, all right, you start tomorrow. Last pitch of the first inning, push off, blow out a knee. Man. Just, just happened. Just happened. Just a freak thing. I didn't know because I've never been hurt or anything. Mm -hmm. And so I walk in and I stretch it, jump on it. Nothing happens. So I'm like, I guess it just needed to pop. I go back out for the second inning and it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> We got through it, but I ended up getting a comebacker with a guy on second, and he got caught. So when I got him in a rundown and gave up to the shortstop, I plant to go back to third, and that's when the rest of it went. Oh, man. Bottom um, half went out. I went the other way. And that was it. I, yep. I got up and hobbled to the dugout. Had you thought about retirement before that at all? I mean, it's I know for ball players it's an inevitable thing at right. some point. Right. Um, but no, I hadn't really, you know, and it's one of those things that they say it all the time. You never know when your last pitch is going to be, mm -hmm. your last at bat. So take, don't, never take it for granted. Yeah. How is retired life? Speaking of that. I love it. Life's good. I got two kids that I get to spend time with. My buddy's back home. And when you played the game for a while, you know, you don't, you don't even remember what a summer's like. Yeah. Because you're never there. And so getting to do that with the family and hang out with them and catching up is nice. I want to go back to talk about 2016, obviously, if we can. Thank you for letting us all along for the ride, because that was one of the, one of the greatest baseball seasons um, Fun times. ever, especially for us, right. us Cubs fans. And from start to finish, like, was it a blur? I mean, it's now looking back. It kind of was, because you don't even remember the beginning of the season now. You just remember at the end and how great it was. And the fact that we did it is still... You know, if you ever sit down and think about it, you're like, I can't believe we did that. I mean, there's highs and lows, obviously, but you guys got off to such a phenomenal start mm -hmm. that year that you took off and just kept going. Just kept going. And then now you're down 3-1, and you got to win three in a row. And so we could have easily folded, got, our, got disheartened, and we did, and we battled back and pulled through. You know, I know you can't think about what could have happened otherwise when you're down 3-1, but it's got to enter your mind, right? Like, there's a possibility that... We're going home. We're going home tomorrow. Right. Then what? You know. It, I mean, what? it didn't happen. No. But, but then what? Then we were sitting there crying, um, saying, "Wish it coulda, woulda, shouldas," but we didn't. What's What's life like on a, a daily basis for you now? You got a couple kids at home. You said, "Wake up, get some breakfast ready for the kids, get them out of bed, get them ready for school. They go to school. If I don't have nothing going on, I." Probably go back home and I take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> um, little time for golf. A little time for golf, hunting. I do a lot of hunting. What's, uh, what kind of hunting? What do you prefer? Uh, Whitetail like? deer and ducks. Okay. And that's, that's all good eating, too. All good eating. Um, do you stay close to home when you hunt? I do. You got to travel a little bit? Or? Um, I traveled a little bit this year. I went and hunted with a buddy in Ohio, and, but I've got some land, fortunate, got some land there by me that I hunt a lot on. I saw a video, we talked about this uh, a little before, you were on the golf course with an unwanted visitor. I don't know, maybe you guys have seen this video on social media also. You can have, it was David Ross's retirement party. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. He's, he's actually, either him or Lester took the picture. And there's a eight foot gator on the green. <laughs> and they were like, you won't go mess with it. And I'm like, ha, all right. Grab my club, start poking it. 
I mean, you were this close. Yeah. It wasn't the smartest thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he retreated into yep. the pond. Yep, he just eased on in, and I said, thank you. Can we do kind of a special lightning round, one hit questions? I thought maybe we could use this as an opportunity to get to know some of your former Cubs teammates. All right. It's innocent, I promise. Let's see. I promise. Um, doesn't have to be strictly Cubs, but you're in your career. Uh, worst dressed teammate. Ooh, worst dressed. Probably me. <laughs> I'll be honest. I wore, you know, I was just a standard. I'm going to, we want you to dress up. Okay. I've got jeans and a button up. And they're like, Hey, come casual. I've got jeans and a button up. Fair enough. There, there's some people out there that don't recognize you with a shirt on. Right. So see, and that, then you've got that. <laughs> uh, best tipper. Best tipper. Lester. Best golfer. I was going to say Lester because I haven't played enough with Ian Happ, but Ian Happ probably now is the best. Yeah. But I would have said Lester or Cal Hendricks. What pitchers, and we talk, I, I'm a golf fan as well. Pitchers and catchers, I feel like, play the game very well. Golf. What is, why is that? We pitchers especially. Of, we have a lot of downtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, biggest flirt amongst teammates of the past for you? Um, biggest flirt. Pedro Strip. Who's the most reserved teammate that you ever played with? Most reserved would probably that I ever played with was probably Joey Votto. Really? Um, messiest? I would probably have to take that one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's for you. I'm, I'm country fan. Uh, Hank Williams Jr. or George Jones? Hank Williams Jr. Hank Jr. Uh, Travis, thank you for sitting down with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. World Series champion Travis Wood. To see more of my interviews with former Chicago Cubs and other great Cubs content, be sure to subscribe to the Chicago Cubs YouTube page.